Hi and welcome to Pocus Geek. My name is Jared Marks. In this video we're going to discuss how to measure the fetal heart rate when performing uh, first trimester pregnancy ultrasound. There is some theory that using pulse wave Doppler may pose some risk towards the fetus. So I prefer to use M mode and I'm going to show you how to use that today in this video. If you haven't had a chance to review the physics video on how an M mode tracing is obtained, I would recommend that you go back to watch that video and I'll put a link down below in the description. Go ahead and click on that and watch that video first so you understand how an M mode tracing is made. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to find the uterus and the gestational sac with the fetus in the middle. So we see the fetus right here. Here's our uterus. Comes down like that. Here's the vaginal stripe and here's bladder. This is a long axis of the uterus and it doesn't matter if you're in a long or short access, but we're gonna focus on the fetus inside the gestational sac. And what we're gonna do is first optimize the depth and then we'll hit M mode and that will give us a line. So what we're gonna see here is that we're gonna optimize the depth first and then we're gonna hit M mode on our machine. So that M mode is gonna give us this line and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this line and put it over the fetal heart rate that we can see right in this area. It's just a little flicker on the screen and then we're gonna hit M mode again or start. And once we do that, we're gonna get a tracing that comes across the screen like this. And what that tracing is doing is it's measuring what's happening at that ultrasound beam over time. We're gonna then hit calcs. On a lot of your machines, it will say fetal heart rate or you may have to hit calculations. And then that will give you a fetal heart rate measurement or may say heart rate and then you're going to hit that and it's going to give you these calipers here. What you're going to do is you're going to select on the tracing just to give us an idea. So this bright area here correlates with the bright area here. We can see it gets darker here. That's this area. This bright area is uh, right where the double the decidua is. We can see that bright black again here correlates to here and that's the fluid within the gestational sac. And this is the fetus and we can see along here that there's just a little change. You can see each, this structure right here looks similar to that structure. And what that is, is that's a tracing of that change in activity or that fetal heartbeat that we can see. And what we're going to do, this is a one beat measurement. On some machines, it may be two. If it's two, just make sure you select two similar spots uh, or a similar spot on each wave. On this one, we're going to pick the beginning of the wave and place the calipers there. So you see we're placing the first one, the second one we're going to move and place them at the exact same spot. And what we get is a heart rate of 150 for the fetus. Pretty simple. You want to hit M mode, place the line over the fetal heart rate, hit M mode again or start depending on the machine, then hit freeze. That will give you the tracing frozen and then you can hit calcs. It may say fetal heart rate just depending on the machine you have. Pay attention to whether it says a one beat or a two beat, and that's where you want to do your measurement. Now, there are some pitfalls to this that I'm going to show you here. So on your M mode, we get this tracing, but we can there is something called sweep speed, and that's how, long, how fast it goes from here to here. And so what you're going to see is I'm going to adjust this, and the sweep speed is going to be too high, and it's not going to give us this nice, pretty tracing. We see these peaks, these complexes that look the same. And so when we do this, what we're going to see is that it's too difficult to see. So we're going to switch and see how fast that M mode tracing is. Now we can see right here, we can see these complexes right there. And those complexes are present, but I just don't find them um, as easy to measure. And I don't think they're um, as easy to, or as easy to see as I would like. So I prefer, to be in a slower sweep speed. So the first one on this machine has three. The first tracing was a medium sweep speed. This was a fast sweep speed and way too fast to get this. Now we're gonna see one that's a slow sweep speed and some people may like this also. So we're gonna see the adjustment here. So we go from a fast to a slow and we'll see that it takes considerably longer for it to get from here to here as far as the time. But we're going to freeze that and we can see these nice complexes and they look the same. Here's one here. 
Here's another one, and we can measure any of these along the way just like we did in the original tracing. And that will also give us a fetal heart rate. I prefer either a slow sweep speed on the machines we have or a medium. I think the fast is way too difficult and is does not work well for uh, obtaining the fetal heart rate. One of the other issues that you can run into is that as you're trying to do this, you may slip off the area the patient may move or um, you may just slip. Now, fortunately, we'll be able to see live video up here. Not all machines are set up that way, so it will depend on what kind of machine you have. But what we can see is here initially we're on, and then we slightly slip off, and then we're not over the fetal heart rate. So when we freeze this, we don't really have a usable line or those complexes in order to measure a fetal heart rate. Be cautious about this. Don't create something in your mind. Don't create something that's not there. And only measure it if you can definitely see um, a good fetal heart tracing or see those complexes that look similar and then measure those. You don't have to wait for it to go from all the way across the screen. If you only make it halfway and you have good complexes, you can measure there. All of those things are okay, but make sure that you can see those complexes as well. I hope that you found that video helpful. Uh, if you did, please subscribe to this channel, give a uh, comment below, or you can email me at pocusgeek at gmail.com. Also, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at, at pocusgeek, where I post uh, interesting cases or even retweet other uh, educational points that people share. Hope you have a great day.